Welcome to Melak Online Tutorial. Before us today is this topic in physics that says uh, projectile. Alright, in this video, we'll get to understand this diagram. Right? And why the vertical velocity y. Now the horizontal velocity x and how we we'll get to calculate the maximum height now the range right okay now the whole essence of this tutorial is just to help students understand the project type from the basic now let us recall that these are the various equations this represents the maximum height. Now this represents the range. And this represents uh, the total time of flight. Now also this represents the velocity at uh, the vertical velocity. Why this represents the horizontal velocity all right from this uh, diagram I mean from this diagram we get to derive all this now the whole essence of this theory as I said initially is to help us understand project type and how all these uh, equations are being derived all right now let's start generally a project type is uh, a term given to a body that travels parabolically now this is just a uh, a parabolic movement in a plane now probably a stone is being thrown it travels this way now for instance let me see a young man through a stone now now the stone travels this right now this is actually the plane under which this body travels right so now this diagram is what we want to like uh, analyze here okay all right let's get started now let us understand now when a body is being thrown like this that's that's under uh, under uh projectile now we have two components that we need to resolve here. First of all, the vertical component and the horizontal component. Now, for instance, as this body travels, now, these are the two components acting on each of this body. Now, two. Now, these is the horizontal velocity why this is the vertical velocity now and that goes this way now this velocity actually changes with time why that of the horizontal component is constant all right now let us now bring this to a bit uh, a clearer picture now look at this taking close a close look at this diagram here okay now you can see here from this okay, let me just tick now this is the horizontal velocity this is the vertical velocity now this is the resultant velocity between these two now let us now resolve this with respect to this and this uh, with respect to the vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity in relationship to the angle of projection all right now from here let us recall from the trigonometry rule of sorry pythagoras uh, sorry trigonometry rule yeah sukatua now Relating theta 
with uh, the vertical velocity and the resultant velocity here. You can see that this is the opposite, this is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent. Alright, now from here you can see that opposite and adjacent. From here this is what sine. So we can now say this is sine theta now equals to the opposite. That is the vertical component of the velocity over the resultant velocity. So from here now, making V the square of the formula, we can now say that V equals to U sub Y. That is the vertical component of the velocity sine theta. So this is the vertical component. Vertical component. Okay. Now, the relationship between the horizontal component of velocity and the resultant velocity here, we can now see this is adjacent hypotenuse. That will be cos, cos theta, use of x over v. And making v the shadow formula, we have that v equals to ux, then cos theta. Now, this is the horizontal component. So, we've derived this right so and i believe this is clear now let us now move to the time yeah the time now for for us to resolve the time take note that this body travels in this format right so we need to consider the velocity the the vertical velocity all right and let us recall from the equation of motion that v equals to u plus or minus uh, 80 All right where v is the final velocity u is the initial velocity now the pl uh, the positive sign here indicates that acceleration is in line with uh, gravity why this is opposite that is it's acting opposite to gravity all right now like plugging in this equation and in relationship to projectile here. Now we'll get to understand that our V becomes zero, final velocity, because the body travels vertically. Now uh, let us represent our A here as a negative G. Now because it's acting against gravity. Okay, all right, and our time still remains that. Now, but our u here, since it, we are taking the vertical, uh, the vertical component of the velocity, so here we have this, okay? So here we have, so this will be the vertical component, that will be u sine theta, okay? All right, now plugging in all this to this, here we have that zero equals to u sine theta, right? Then negative g t. Now making t the subject of relation now we can now have it that uh, it will be g t equals to u sine theta then our t equals to u sine theta over g all right now this is actually the time taken for this body from here to this point right now the total time of flight that is from Starting from this point till this point here, you can see from here to here is actually half of the whole uh, 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 time of our projection. So, and as such, our t here will now become that will be two times of this. That will be so our time of flight will now be two times t, which will give us to t equals to two u sine theta over g now we've derived this okay all right so let us move further and the next one we'll be off we'll be deriving this time around is the total time of flight now for the maximum height now take note that at this point here this is the maximum height of this projector so at this point here v is a zero now let us recall from one of the equation of motion v square equals to u square uh, plus or negative uh, 2 as where s is actually the distance or can 
also be taken as a displacement but here we'll take it as a the maximum height now since it is a vertical we'll make use of the negative sign so here we have that v square equals to u square minus uh, two then our acceleration here uh sorry our a here will actually be what and this negative is actually this one so we have it this way okay now since our v is zero we have zero equals u square minus two a h now take note that since here we are resolving uh, with the vertical component so this equation here becomes uh, zero equals to u sine theta or raised to the power of 2 minus 2gh. Now, resolving this, I mean solving this, this becomes 0 equals to u square sine square theta minus 2gh. Alright, now bringing this expression to the left hand side, it becomes 2gh equals to u square sine uh, square theta. Now making a is the formula here, so we have uh, that is dividing both sides by 2g. So our h here becomes u square sine square theta over 2g. Okay, so now we can see we've uh, gotten this. All right, now let us now move to solving uh, this. Now let us re also recall from the equation of motion. Uh, uh, the one that that's sorry, first of all, let us take note this is the range that from here to here, which is probably the linear distance, right? Now, let us recall that uh, s u t plus or negative uh, 1 over 2 a t square. All right, now with this, s will be represented as r, right? And our T here, so our T, okay, our A becomes uh, G, right? All right, so and as such also, uh, take note also here that, now this is the horizontal velocity, so our horizontal velocity here will now becomes uh, U, that will be horizontal velocity, which is x, that will be u sine theta. Okay, now from here now, we then tend to plug in all this expression into the above equation. And by so doing, we just need to be very, very careful at this. Okay, so at this point here now, we see that s now equals u t now plus uh, or negative 1 over 2 a t 80 square now from here we get to understand that uh, now understand that the velocity here the horizontal velocity here is actually constant and as such acceleration will be zero so here we have that plus or minus if the whole of here is zero then we are left with s u t right okay now our s for acceleration sorry let me then since this is a horizontal velocity so here we plug in this so here we have u cos theta now times now our t here take note is actually the range the distance from here to here so we're making use of time of flight total time of flight so plugging in t for this expression here we now have that 2 u sine theta all over g now multiplying this expression together here we have that this is a uh, 2 u square then sine theta cos theta now if we are to rearrange this sir, over g 
In fact, to rearrange it, this will be r equals to u square to 2 sine theta cos theta then all over what g. Now, according to the trigonometry law, this sign here will give us, so here you have u square then sine 2 theta all over g. Alright, now let us recall. Let me quickly solve that here so that to give you a better understanding. Now, this now you know here you have sine into let me see 2u. I mean, 2 theta is the same thing as saying sine into theta plus theta. Now let us recall also that sine a plus b will give us sine a cos b then uh, plus uh, sine b cos a. Now if this and this is the same by virtue of this, you can now say this is sine theta cos theta then equals to sine theta cos theta now you can see that this is the same thing as this just for instance we say x plus x since they are the same which will give us what 2x now following this procedure you can now say here this is the same thing as saying 2 sine uh, theta cos theta right so which means this gives us this and that's how we got our so here our range will now be 2 I mean uh, u square sine 2 theta all over g all right we've also derived this all right this is just the basic of our projectile and subsequently I'll be solving series of our equations I mean, problems rather on that projector. And if you love what I've just done, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel and sure you click on the notification button to be notified of all my videos in physics, mathematics, and chemistry. Thank you and God bless you.